Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello, and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have return guest. Holly Madison, of course, you know her from her books, her new shows on ID that we're going to talk about, second season of Playboy Murders, also Girls Next Door, famous Playmate, your stellar podcast that everyone loves that you guys have been doing for a while. I think this is like the fourth time you've come on my show. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's always such a fun show to do. I'm excited that you're coming back because um, you have your second season of the Playboy murders. Yeah. And tell us like a little bit about how it came about and the response and everything. Cause it's kind of like a new thing for you to be getting into, which I think you're really good at. Thanks. Yeah. The production company Lion TV came to me. They sent a deck to my agent of the shows they wanted to cover. And when my agent first brought it up to me, I was like, I can't, can't do another Playboy thing. Like I'm up to my ears in it. Like I'll have nightmares. Like I don't want to. And he goes, okay, we'll just take a look at this deck and then let me know what you think. But when I saw the cases they wanted to cover for season one, many of which were cases I'd never heard of, you know, I thought I knew everything about the history of everybody who'd ever been involved in Playboy, but I was really intrigued by it. And I thought this is a show I'd actually watch. So I really wanted to be involved and I had a great experience. Season one. So we're back with season two and I'm even more excited about this season. I'm really excited to share these stories. Some of them involve people that I knew of or had met in real life. Some of them are stories I hadn't heard of before until they were brought to my attention. And we're also covering the Dorothy Stratton case, which is a very famous case. But we're talking to people that I don't remember ever seeing interviewed on a documentary before, like her roommate who lived with her. Let's just remind people of of Dorothy Stratton. Mm -hmm. I definitely was probably the most famous tragedy Besides the tragedy in general of yeah. <laughs> Playboy, um, which was revealed a lot in the doc. Um, and I think in knowing, in watching that documentary um, about all, you know, how many people they interviewed, that was so interesting on Playboy. In reading some of these cases, which we'll get into us talking about, it does, there is such an element that ties Playboy to these different tragedies and what I don't know like now I just feel like we know so much more Mm -hmm. and being that you like lived it you were on Girls Next Door you were the main girlfriend you're with you for so many years and I know you had some trepidation about even being part of of that big documentary yeah did you watch it did you watch the other women from like 40 years back be interviewed and like and what How did that affect you? Like knowing all that, which you Mm -hmm. clearly didn't know when you walked in at, how old were you when you first went to the party? Uh, 21. Yeah. yeah. And then got involved and got sucked into that world and got on the show. Mm -hmm. Like, is it, was, was that bizarre to you? Like to know that, that this all existed before you stepped in and the, the story that what you were sold in, Mm -hmm. in 2000 or whatever it was versus... What had been going on for 30, 40 years prior to you stepping foot? Yeah, it was really bizarre and hard to watch. I'm very grateful for all the women who shared their stories. I feel less alone because of it. And that's why I wanted to be interviewed for that documentary and agreed to be interviewed is because I wanted to support them as well. And... I had no idea about any of that stuff when I first came to the mansion. Over the years I was there, I started to have an idea of a little bit of it, but not very much. How were you getting, how, what were some of the things that you were like, hmm, and maybe you pushed to the back of your mind or didn't want to know more? Well, the first person who was interviewed for Secrets of Playboy was Jennifer Saginar, who was the daughter of Hef's doctor, and she lived at the house for a while. And she had written a book while I was there, maybe like midway into my time at the mansion. And I just remember when it came out, Hef kept trying to debunk it by saying, well, look, she got this fact wrong. She said she saw John Belushi there at this date, but he was dead by this date. Like he was pointing out all these inconsistencies. So, you know, I kind of took it with a grain of salt, but I don't disbelieve any of it. So did you read that book? I did, but very, like, low-key. Like, I didn't want have to see I was reading it. You're, like, in the bathroom. Yeah. Like... And I didn't know what really what to make of it at the time because he was kind of pointing out inconsistencies with it. But now I don't disbelieve any of, like, the 
you know, the real stuff that happened right. with her, and when the someone, traumatic things. And she was very young, too. Right. And when somebody comes out with something like that, you know, and, and you've got the person that you're living with, that's mm-hmm. your whole world being like, oh, she was bitter or they're chasing something or she couldn't make it as an actress. So now she's doing this tell all to get press. They just want to get press. Mm-hmm. Of course, that's always the thing that you hear from the man that's denying the accusation, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And then with Sandra, Theodore's story, she was Hef's girlfriend in the 70s, and she shared her story on Secrets of Playboy, which was really heart-wrenching to watch. You know, she was still, like, coming up to the mansion for certain social things while I was there, and she was always really nice. But I always kind of had a suspicion that maybe something hadn't been happy, just little, you know, things I would hear from people who'd been friends with her back then and saying that she didn't, always enjoy her time there and I always kind of felt like she seemed when she would come back up like she was almost about ready to cry but I didn't really know her that well and I didn't know what that was I thought well maybe she just had a drink and is having fun or maybe it's been a rough day I don't know like I didn't look into it too much but it was those little clues that when I hear the story now I'm like oh it all makes sense I love when Juicy Scoopers come up to me and tell me I love listening to your show and I share it with other Juicy Scoopers that are friends of mine and we talk about it I text them about it Well, when you've got something juicy to share, don't you want to share it with the best deal in wireless? Well, that is at Mint Mobile. For a limited time only, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans for just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash juicy scoop. That's mintmobile.com slash juicy scoop. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash juicy scoop additional taxes fees and restrictions apply see mint mobile for details now was she the one because i remember this is just stuck in my brain so much there was one of them that you know was very happy to be with with half and thought that he adored her and loved Mm -hmm. her and she was trying to be an actress and she was so excited and she got an agent or an audition or something and he basically squashed it. He like found out and at, to her face was like, oh, that's great. And then went and called and was like, don't give her the part or dump her as a client because if she gets this, then I can't control her. And I actually don't want her to be a success. I actually don't mm-hmm. want her to be on Hawaii Five O or whatever. Yeah, I think that was Sandra that had that story. Yeah, And I thought that was so telling and I thought I thought it was a good thing for people to see today Mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people get in relationships where there's a a big power dynamic Mm -hmm. and they're like oh my god this is great he's rich he's great he's connected um yeah he's 20 years older or whatever but I'm thrilled to like you know get to meet all these important people and then the years go by and you're like well why 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 haven't I been given anything you know or why haven't I gotten anything and the truth is that person that could get you on a show (laughs) like that literally could pick up the phone as easily as picking Mm -hmm. up the phone and saying don't give her the part could be like hey my girl's going out for a five and under on a sitcom can you can you can you get it for her yeah they just as easily can be like you better make sure she doesn't get that part yeah for sure a hundred percent and I think, you know, with Hef, from what I observed, it seemed like any time one of his girlfriends did find success and, like, left because of it, it kind of seemed like he got stricter and stricter with each new group of women that came along to try and keep that from happening. But when I was 21 and going up to the mansion and seeing it from the outside, everybody, including him, acts like they're so happy. I thought he just loved the revolving door. And if his playmates went on to be successes, great. Good for the magazine. I didn't think there was anything weird about that. But apparently You know what I'm just a, remembering right now? Because I told you that, like, around 98, 99, I was going to the parties. Mm-hmm. And I was on the list, I don't know, to, when they needed some people to go, I guess. <laughs> no what tier I was on. <laughs> but I remember getting invited, and I care. I want to say her name was Brandy. Mm-hmm. She was one of his girlfriends, and she got on Baywatch, Baywatch Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. And the, the party was, it was a smaller 
party, but still a party, but mm-hmm. not like a midsummer's. And they're like, we're having a party for her because she got on the Hawaii thing. Mm-hmm. And I remember going, oh, that's really nice. I guess they won't still be boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever. But now I'm thinking that was kind of the last time <laughs> yes, that he that allowed that time. to happen. Yeah. I mean, based on what I know from him, yes. I think he kind of expected her to come back. I'm sure she was probably very clear on her intentions, but I think he kind of expected her to come back and then was disappointed when that didn't happen. And then you didn't you didn't see anybody else doing anything until Girls Next Door, but he very much thought he can control that as well. Yeah, I just think I think a lot of people get with someone and to the outside world, they're oh my God, they're, you know, Instagram even today, their Instagram numbers went up. They're mm-hmm. on the red carpet. They're this, oh my God. And then the years go by and it's like, well, no, that who knows if that person, you know, like, even like a Kate O'Kalen, okay? Yeah. Like, I remember talking to Kate O'Kalen, mm-hmm. famous from the OJ trial, and I was like, you know, you became famous, you're this famous neighbor and everything. I go, but you were like booking stuff, and you were like a legit actor going out for stuff. Do you mm-hmm. ever wonder if you were not living in that right? guest house, had you at, could have been on fucking Friends? Like, who knows? Yeah, because now all anyone can see him as is right. the OJ guy. And yeah. he can't get lost in a role anymore. He can't be anyone else's new discovery. And that's what a casting director wants. Is yeah. They want to feel like they found the person. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk about a, a couple of these cases. Yeah. Um, this one I, I'm not aware of. Her name's Lori Bembenek. How do you say yes, her last name? Yes, this is Lori Bembenek. She was framed for murder in the early 80s, ended up going to prison for 10 years. She worked as a Playboy bunny at one of the resorts up in the Midwest. And In the 80s? Yeah, but she uh-huh. only worked there for three weeks. She okay. had been a police officer before. And once she got framed for this murder, all anyone wrote about was that she was the Playboy bunny killer. You know, she they framed her kind of as this femme fatale and nobody ever ran a picture of her in her police officer uniform or anything else she was just known as a bunny and this was something that was very so bothersome she was to like her. The, yeah. the waitress girl in the mm-hmm. cute yeah in the costume yeah. and so what was the case how did they frame her what happened Well, it was the wife, the ex-wife of her husband who was murdered. And supposedly there had been a large man in a wig wearing an army jacket, according to the kids' testimony. Because the kids were in the house that night. They saw it, but they weren't killed. But somehow it got turned around on her. And there's some suspicion because she had filed a discrimination suit against the Milwaukee Police Department. Because she'd been let go from the force for reasons she thought were shady. So it's all a very suspicious situation. And she ended up writing a book about it after the fact. So I was able to go in and kind of see she's no longer with us now. She passed away at age 50, but she But wait, she story, did get so. convicted? She did, and she spent 10 years in prison. <gasps> she escaped. She met someone in prison. They escaped. She went to Canada, got caught there, and she was – only extradited back to the States when they agreed to retry the case. So she ended up getting second degree, but time served. So she was free after that. But it was just a wild story. And it got so much press attention at the time. And by the time she escaped, everybody was kind of rooting for her. And they her nickname was Bambi. So it was like, Run Bambi oh, Run was the slogan. I remember this. Yeah. I remember this like made for TV mm-hmm. movie now. Yeah. Because they called her Bambi in the police academy training. They all had nicknames for each other. Wow. You know, it's just it, it is just so um, it's so interesting how press and media, you know, any kind of like even when you watch like a Dateline or whatever, mm-hmm. if it, it's like a Hollywood story, you know, yeah. and they're like, oh, and I'm like, oh, let me get into this one. And it's like they'll exaggerate how much the person even worked in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. It'll be like for sure. And she had, um, you know, and you're like, wait a minute. She was an extra <laughs> for one day. Yeah. Like, they, but anything to kind of like grab on that the players in it were Hollywood driven or attractive. So mm-hmm. then any association with Playboy 
you know, just really ups the interest. But then, of course, yeah, it can sure. be really used against you, too, mm-hmm. when in this in this case. It's frustrating because back then there was no social media or any way she could really speak for herself. Yeah, in a she way couldn't do a affected. TikTok and be like, oh, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. yeah, like I was really a police officer. Yeah. <laughs> Not just a waitress for three weeks. Yeah, and they fired me because I was being hit on and I was going to yeah. talk about it or whatever the case might have been. Or, or they were just pissed that they were even allowing women back then to be mm-hmm. cops or whatever. Yeah. Um, Okay, this story is crazy. Yes, I'd never heard of this one until the producer brought it to my attention. This is Melanie Holler. She was an actress. She was on Welcome Back, Cotter. She had a recurring role on that show. Which was a huge sitcom in the 70s with John Travolta. It was Mm -hmm. like, you know, that's when there were three channels on TV and millions and millions of people watched you know, each show. Yeah. yeah. And she did a celebrity pictorial in Playboy. And while the magazine was still on the newsstand, she was invited out to a party in the Hamptons at this guy's house. His name was Roy Raiden. He was a producer. And a bunch of horrible things happened at that party. She was terribly abused, almost left for dead. Something so, so- happened where Roy actually called her mom and said, she's out here. I don't know how he got his mother's information, her mother's information. And she said, well, can you put her in a car at least? And he said, no, $60 for a limo is too expensive. I'm putting her on a bus. And she was found on the bus, just beaten and... Like, what you gave me some of the notes. So these are the things that I gathered. was like, she also met some guy who she brought as her date. And she was going there with her portfolio Mm -hmm. to audition. (sighs) Yeah. And to audition for this legit movie producer mm-hmm. that did uh, the movie Cotton Club, which was yeah. a big movie. I want to say, I even think maybe Eddie Murphy or someone was in it, but it was a big movie like in the 80s. And so, you know, again, whether it's Harvey Weinstein or whatever, you're like, okay, this is my chance. Yeah. And like, I'm, I am a legit actress. I have, you know, been on set. I am attractive. Um, you know, naturally beautiful back then. People didn't have all the plastic surgery, so it was, like, hard to find the girl Mm -hmm, that had the perfect teeth and the perfect (laughs) tits. And and so then she goes out there and, you know, these group orgy kind of things happen to her. They drug her. Mm -hmm. And thank God she lived. But they find her, like, yeah, like, the next... Yeah, I mean, the fact that this guy just didn't even care that she was beaten and abused and raped and he throws her on a bus or Mm -hmm. a a subway or something back to the mom and then someone found her next to her portfolio. Yeah. I'm just like, but let's get into how weird the background of this guy was and the things that they found as evidence of the kind of shit that these people were into in the 80s. Yeah. Well, he was a producer of live events like vaudeville and things. Well, vaudeville revival at that point. But he was very successful, later got into movies, as you said, like the Cotton Club. And he was doing a lot of crazy stuff at his house. They found videotape. They found all kinds of evidence of, you know, weird ritualistic things and sexual assault. Yeah, satanic stuff. It's really scary. And snuff films. Mm -hmm. Which I didn't know what snuff films were. You'd hear that. Yeah. And they're actually films that existed where they would film like actual murders yeah and people would pass them around Mm -hmm. and i think back then there weren't vhs tapes and stuff like that so you kind of had to be with someone in the movie industry to have it be playing on film to see it yeah or somebody has to have the whole theater set up at their house yeah and so here are these people that are these elites in hollywood Mm -hmm. back then This shit really happened. You hear about it now and people think it's not real or whatever. What crazy, you know, TikTok conspiracy, whatever. Mm -hmm. But according to this hardcore evidence, this shit was happening in the 80s with people in the industry. And then they would actually abuse these women and have these sex orgies with also women participating Mm -hmm. and abusing the women and film it. Yeah. It's really disgusting. Okay, so what happened with her case? Because I, then she was able to point out the people who did it. Mm-hmm. But the guys barely got a slap on the wrist. I don't think they did any time or anything. I think it said 30 days for one guy and the other guy a fine for 1000 Yeah. Be- and a nothing, lot of that yeah. was 
she was a playmate. Mm -hmm. She went to the party willingly. She drank and did drugs. Her issue was still on the stand when it happened. So everybody just kind of had this prejudice in their mind that they should never have had in the first place. But Right. Yeah. Oh, her issue of Playboy was still mm -hmm. on the newsstand. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, well, this girl, this is what happens. This is why you shouldn't, you know, take nude photos for a magazine. Yeah, that's how people think. And or thinking like, well, this is what crazy Hollywood people do mm -hmm. and you deserve it. And yeah, it's horrific for sure. And where is she still alive today? She's still alive. Um, Roy Raiden, I believe this separate case isn't a case I'm focusing on, so I might have the facts wrong, but I believe he got murdered in what they call the Cotton Club murders. Oh, that's – yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they found him in, like, the desert. Mm -hmm. Obviously looked like a hit. Yeah, really scary. I'm thinking – I just read that. And I'm like, oh, he raped the wrong person's daughter. Right. He took somebody somebody's kid, got invited or was excited to go to this fancy party in the Hamptons thinking they're going to make connections. And somebody's uncle or whatever's in the mob. And they were like, uh, no, not today, Satan. Like, you're fucking yeah. dead. Yeah. Could be karma comes back around. Yeah, that was just, it's just, so, I just, there's something just so sad about this or sexual harassment or like the Harvey, anything mm -hmm. where someone thinks, like, I don't know, just because I look back, reading, even reading the stuff that you sent me, it just like brings back like so many memories of just, somebody going hey you want to go to this and and i'm like oh i could meet some people and yeah, i can for sure and it could lead to something mm -hmm. and you know um you'll almost go anywhere you know when you don't have connections and you're just like because you think of it as work you're just putting yourself out there you're mingling and you never know what's going to be the wrong thing yeah and i i mean even in my early like stand-up days mm -hmm. i just remember i did this tiny little bit a friend of a friend worked for e and it was like E was like barely around. And she's like, I want to do a story on like female stand-ups. I had literally done stand-up like, I don't even know, probably 10 or 15 mm -hmm. times. And so they come to the comedy store in the belly room and she films a little thing. And the woman who runs it is like so excited because she's been doing it for like 30 years and has never been on TV. So it was like, whatever. And I get interviewed. But, you know, E, they keep playing that shit. <laughs> and this guy comes up to me at the Starbucks in um, – in Brentwood, and he's like, hey, I saw you, and, you know, my friend's a comedy manager. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, all I want is representation. This is amazing. All right, come. I'm doing another show yeah. at the Belly Room Comedy Store this weekend, da, da, da. So the guy comes, and he's like, yeah, I think you got something. Let's, you know, let's meet. Let's work together. Mm -hmm. And I remember my sister and my best friend, we went across to House of Blues and we were partying. And I was like, next year it's the Oscars. Like I was just like, finally, I have someone that can send me out. So the guy <laughs> gets me booked at this club, which doesn't exist anymore, which was great. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, I remember I called him. And I'm like, I'm so excited. I am I can now host, meaning I'm just basically doing five minutes and inter introducing people. No, for no money, of course. And he's like, well, I have a little issue. I'm like, what? And he goes, well, my phone died. or so I don't know what. He said he needed $180. This is my big Hollywood manager, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like. Thinking in my dumb head of desperation in Hollywood and being like 22 years old, I was like, oh, my God, I got to get this guy's phone back and running. Yeah. Like, how are all these people going to find me? Right. So I go and I give him the $180. He never pays me back. Ugh. And then but every time he'd be like, hey, you know, let's go over your stand up or something. I would go. And then, of course, one day he like. Makes a move on me. Oh, no. And, uh, and he was so gross. Oh. I never got my $180 no. back. Oh, it's the worst. It's but the see, worst, but I was just yeah. so excited. Yeah, but especially back in the day when we didn't have those online resources and you're new to the industry and you don't know anybody attached. Yeah. You're kind of just, you know, you're and you're told to do that. Network, show up everywhere, take every opportunity. Yeah. 
We do a fair amount of gossiping on this Juicy Scoop podcast, I know, and loose lips sink ships. But when you have something really juicy you have to say and share with someone, you got to do it. And right now, the best deal in wireless is at Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans from just $15 a month. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. Ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's limited time deal and get premium wireless service for just $15 a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash juicy scoop. That's mintmobile.com slash juicy scoop. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash juicy scoop. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Nothing starts my day off better than when my hair is having a great hair day. And one way to do that in 2024 is Way. Get your way to good hair days in just five minutes with Way's new hair gloss. Not only does hair gloss give you immediate shine straight from the shower, it also helps treat damage and enhances color vibrancy to get your hair looking and feeling healthier. I have been using this. I use it about once a week and it makes such a difference. My hair feels silky and shiny. And what's really great is that Hair gloss helps prevent heat damage up to 450 degrees. And I blow dry my hair. I pull it straight with a with a curling iron and then curl it. Like I use a lot of heat on it and it is looking shinier and healthier and more vibrant than ever thanks to Way's hair gloss. Give your hair a glow up with Way. Go to T-H-E-O-U-A-I.com and use the promo code JUICY for 15% off any product. That's theway.com, T-H-E-O-U-A-I.com, promo code JUICY. Remind people again, because I don't remember, mm-hmm. you get, you come here from, where, did, where are you from again? I came from Oregon. Yeah, I transferred colleges. I was at Loyola Marymount. So you're at Loyola Marymount mm-hmm. going to school. Mm-hmm. And how did you, did you know you, were you interested in modeling, acting? Like what was your thing? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely wanted to model or act or just do something in the entertainment industry. Right. I didn't even know what. So I had an agent. I had my headshots. I was going out on all auditions. And also I was working to pay my tuition, the part that the scholarship didn't cover. But I also have to keep my grades up to keep the scholarship money. So I was just kind of flopping at everything because I was trying to do too much. And I'd been invited to the Playboy parties, which I love Playboy. And wanted now, to Playboy how were you and first invited to. to the party? I was in a Hawaiian Tropics contest. And I ended up working for Hawaiian Tropics. And Hef's doctor would invite the girls from Hawaiian Tropic to go. He would just so tell the Hawaiian that Tropic like? that guy, was all like these girls were invited. The bathing suits. Mm-hmm. You have a, sl- a sash, right? Like yeah. you were like in a pageant. Usually to events, though, you'd wear like shorts and like a crop top that said Hawaiian Tropic. Or you'd be hired to be like a featured extra in a movie if they wanted like cute girls or something. So you were just in this cute girl mm-hmm. situation. Yeah. And you get paid how much back in the day to like oh, go God, participate? I don't even remember. I mean, if I could guess and it would be completely the wrong number it wasn't like a lot of money but it but it was you know i was a bud light girl Uh uh-huh that we'd go to bars and a couple events and i found the outfit it was like pretty conservative actually it wasn't even like that cute anyway i remember it was 75 dollars and i was pretty excited to get that for three out three or four hours to be with my friends yeah, it was probably something similar for the Hawaiian Tropic. And you just like, like flirt yeah. and gave out like a free mm-hmm. button. Yeah. Wasn't, Have your picture taken. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It really wasn't that bad. Okay. So you so so you get invited to the parties mm-hmm. and then. Well, I went to the big party, the Midsummer Night's Dream party. Yeah. And then I was asked to come to the Sunday pool parties, which are smaller and much more exclusive. And I started going to those and, you know, talking to the people that would go every Sunday. I didn't really talk to half much or anything until about. Like a year after going to my first Sunday pool party, that's when I went out with the group. Oh, that's when you're out with the group. And then they were like, we like you. We want you to stay. Mm -hmm. And at that time, were you still in school? No, I had dropped out and taken some time off like right before. because I was like, I'm I'm not doing well at anything right now. I need to like narrow it down. So I'll try and do something in the entertainment industry because you have to do that while you're young. I can go back to school at any time. 
So were you like living in a, in some apartment in L.A.? Like mm-hmm. did you have a roommate? Yeah, with a couple other girls who were also working at Hooters with me because that was my job. Yeah. And But around that time, both of my roommates had decided to move back home. So I was like, I'm going to so be homeless. So now you're fucked. Yeah. And that's why I went out with the group because I was like, maybe I could live there for a while. <laughs> I, make, I wouldn't have had the balls to do that if I hadn't been like almost homeless. Right. Yeah. So then you're like, all right, fine. Like, mm-hmm. who knows, you know, where this will lead. Yeah. And then was there any opportunity before the TV show that maybe maybe it was sabotaged now that you look back? I don't know that anything particularly was sabotaged. I caught on pretty quick that I wasn't supposed to work. He didn't want us having any kind of like day job or anything like that. So I would like sneak around and go to auditions and things like that. And I'd get callbacks for things. But I got to a point where I was like, Ugh, I give up on this. I forget what it was, but it was one of those like three strike experiences where like I was on hold for a commercial. So I called my agent like, am I still on hold? And the new receptionist was like, you are never on hold for anything. It was just a bunch of weird experiences like yes. that. I'm like, I'm done with this. This is such a pain in the ass. Right. And then the show came along. I know. There's sometimes in this business where it just hits you on the wrong day. There's other days where you're like, keep going, sister. (laughs) And then there's other days where you're like, you know what? Just fuck it. Like, (laughs) I can't take it. I can't. Yeah. It's too much uncertainty. Yeah. I I totally hear you. Okay. Um, Oh, this was... This was just a yeah. photo of her her whole thing. And then she went on, this girl that we went back to, the one that was unfortunately beaten and all this stuff. And then she just led a quiet life, right? Yeah, I think she chose to live privately, which is understandable after all that trauma and yeah. going through the case and everything and not feeling like people are siding with you, I imagine. Yeah, but she's still with us. So yeah. that's good. Okay, now these girls, the Bentley twins, mm-hmm. I remember them. And they were his two identical girlfriends. They were in the press a lot. Yeah. And they were right before kind of you guys, right? Yeah. The first Midsummer Night Stream party I went to, he was still dating the twins. And I remember seeing them and thinking they were the best looking people I'd ever seen in my life. Like I, like my jaw was on the floor. I just thought they were stunning. And I never yeah. got to know them personally because they were gone by the time I moved in. But I just thought they were so pretty. Now, this is a crazy story. So why don't you walk us through it? Okay. So this is a kind of a stranger than fiction story. So one of the twins, Sandy, she was dating half, but on the side, she was seeing this guy who, Mark Yagala, who was this very young, like early 20s, kind of Wall Street guy who we would find out later was embezzling a lot of the money people were giving him to invest. He ended up spending $7 million on Sandy. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know how to get a guy to spend that much money, but... You spent $7 million yes. on how? Like, just jewels and... Bought her a house in Vegas, remodeled the house. Oh, and she's, like, like also, like, coming yeah. back. And, and But at this time, they didn't have the 9 p.m. Yeah, I think things were a little more lax back then. But she and this twin sister still lived at the mansion mm-hmm. while she was seeing this Wall Street guy. Yeah. And he was, he was young but rich. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so he spent all this money on her, but then... And they met... Is this the guy that she met at the Garden of Eden? Yeah. Club? Well, she met half at the Garden of Eden. I'm not sure I where totally she remember that place. Yeah. You know what, who I think... I think that's where Kyle from Real Houses of Beverly Hills met Mauricio. Really? The Garden of oh Eden was on La Cienega, right? I don't know, because I think it was over by the time I was kind of on the scene a I little def- bit. I definitely remember going there. Okay, so continue. Yeah. So uh, this Mark Yagala gets busted for what he's doing, and then they start looking into where did all the funds go? Where did all this money go? Because they're trying to get it back for the victims, right? So they find that a lot was spent on Sandy and, you know, they're seizing all her assets. And apparently she and her new boyfriend, a really good looking guy who was a doorman at the Garden of Eden. It all comes back to Garden of Eden for some reason. They had, you know, taken some of her jewels and had hidden them and tried to sell them kind of on the down low to get some of that money back. And he ended up being found dead along with his best friend who went with him in a car and the jewels were gone. And it's still to this day unsolved. But wait, where was the Wall Street guy? He he was no longer involved at this point. So he was out of the picture, yeah. but he's alive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. This, and then these two guys were found. Dead, yeah, because they were trying to sell the jewels. And the jewels were gone. They were dead. Nobody knows who has the jewels, who was supposed to buy the jewels. And and when all this was going down, were they, were they still hanging out with half or No. I, th- I think they were – I think she was gone. Well, she was definitely gone by the time the murders happened. I remember hearing about it maybe a year or two after I moved in. 
I remember one of Hef's friends was telling me about it at the dinner table, and I just thought, this is stranger than, like, you can't write this stuff. So many twists and turns. I remember, like, seeing a lot about this, like, during the hard copy days Mm -hmm. and stuff. And I remember they'd be, like, following her, like, out of a store in Vegas or whatever. Uh And they, where are these twins now? Because I feel like we have not heard from them and they were not part of the Playboy doc. No, they've definitely been living quiet lives. I know Sandy got married and had a baby. And, you know, everybody I know who knows them only has nice things to say. And Mm. I think they're just living quiet lives. And so the other girl, though, Sandy, the other sister, never was involved. No, she wasn't involved as far as I know. What happened to those two other twins? Oh, the Shannon twins who were there later? Wait, weren't there also, maybe these weren't Playboy. There were these two other twins that were always on hard copy that were oh, super thin. Oh, the Barbie twins? The Barbie twins. They were in Playboy. I don't think they were like ever involved with Hef or anything, but Romantic, they were in yeah. Playboy a couple times. And they would just get so much plastic surgery and they were so skinny. And, and they really had the big, big boobs. Yeah. yeah. What happened to them? I don't know. That's a good question. Someone I, someone listening knows what's happened yeah. to them. Yeah. Let us I know. just feel like those shows that were on like, at seven at night, like every night, like the hard copy, the extra, they must have paid these weirdos to be on it all the time. Like they must have been getting something out of it. I feel like there was 10,000 stories on those Barbie twins. Yeah, you would think. Yeah. yeah. But it was great publicity back then, though, because this was back when there were only like a handful of channels. Right, exactly. Cable. Yeah. Well, you know the um, the Courtney Stodden. Yeah. She's the young girl mm-hmm. that married that actor. Yeah. She came on my show years ago and like I was probably one of the first interviews that she did after she was, you know, rid of him mm-hmm. and everything. And she and she was 16, she was a virgin. Her parents yeah. signed off on her marrying this guy. She had big natural boobs, mm-hmm. so she looked a lot older than she was. But I I asked about that and she goes, "Oh no, we got paid for that. We'd be paid all he was so he would constantly – and they always – people were so fascinated that he was, like, 51 and, yeah. like, this character actor. And she was this 16-year-old whose parents signed off on it, but she looked like she was 40. Mm-hmm. That They were like, that's what people want to see. They would yeah. do another interview with them and another interview with them and another – and it was like, wow. oh, my God. That's crazy. But, but it was because he was negotiating money. Oh, wow. For them to be on it. Yeah, like tabloid style. That's yeah. crazy. I think there's going to be, I think more and more we're going to see more stuff. Like, I feel like there's some sensational um, podcast guests and stuff that are happening. And I'm like, how did they get that one? I'm like, oh, I think someone just offered them like 10 grand. Probably, right? Yeah, because I'm like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, if you're going to do one, why wouldn't you go for like the biggest one out there or whatever? And I don't really begrudge the person for going Mm -hmm. and being like, here's 10 grand, do my show. And they don't have to say anything. Why? You yeah. know, or whatever. But um, like, I wonder how Gypsy Rose picked the interviews she did with Nick. Yeah. And I think I think she did. I mean, it's a big first, it's like a, a big show. Yeah. I know. Uh, this is what I think. What? I think he's taking a page out of Bethany's book. And I think he's going to help set up her own podcast under his umbrella. Oh, that makes sense. That's my prediction. Yeah. That totally makes sense. I mean, I don't know how that's going to be, but. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's fascinating. She's so good at press. Yeah. For somebody who's just. A murderer. I mean, I guess it makes sense because, <laughs> or somebody who's been in jail for so long. But I guess it makes sense because her mom was always, you know, pushing her out there to kind of be a spokesperson yeah. for them, like on a local level and stuff. So I guess it makes sense. But And also the mom. I mean, listen, if that's what you're raised with. Like, I remember I had a friend whose mom was really attractive. Uh-huh. And at a very young age, she was like, I'm going to show you how you get free dry cleaning. And she flirted with the weird dry cleaner. And she was like <laughs> a single mom. And like, just like, yeah. you might have a mom that like cooks, teaches you how to cook yeah. really well. And then there's moms that are like, let me show you how to get a guy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and ha ha ha. And you laugh lightly, da, 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 you know, or whatever. And then I think there's ones that whatever those manipulative traits are, you might you might benefit from them in a positive way, yeah. providing you're not doing Munchausen by proxy, but like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, she handles herself really, really well. I feel like if I were in her position, I'd be like a lump. 
Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be good at it. No, I think she loves the attention. I mean, it is kind of like the ultimate flex. You got a guy to kill your mom. You went to prison. He's going to spend the rest of life in his prison. In prison, you're out. But you didn't even marry that guy. You yeah. hadn't married somebody else. <laughs> yeah. And you had like she had so many guys writing to her. Yeah, they seem like a cute couple now together. I like their funny little when they when she writes like the D is fire on his oh, pictures yeah. and stuff. <laughs> it's cute. We'll see. Well, I I don't. We'll see where she is in a few months. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to want to hear the podcast for a year. I don't know if we'll be over it in three months. It's kind of interesting to see, like, who lasts. Yeah, it's interesting to see, like, who the public attaches to. and. I mean, originally like I thought they'd go straight to OnlyFans. Oh, but I don't, I don't think that's going to – I don't think that's going to happen for a while. But I like to predict what people are going to do. It doesn't mean I'm going to no, be right. No, I think right. you're good at predictions. <laughs> I do. I really want to know what happened with these girls. I would I would love to hear from them. Yeah, me too. I think it'd be so interesting. Um, okay, now this girl, I totally remember this story. This has been mm-hmm. a subject of, like, I think a lot of datelines in 2020s. Tell us about this Yeah, one. this is Paula Sladuski. She posed for Playboy during the 50th anniversary Playmate search, which was done back in 2003. Um, she later went on to live in Miami, and she went out to a nightclub with her boyfriend one night. They got in a fight at the club, and club security kind of separated them, and they let Paula go first and waited a few minutes before they let the boyfriend out because they thought, you know, they were helping in that way. But she ended up out there by herself and was wandering around this neighborhood trying to get home. And then later her body was found horribly burned in a dumpster. And this is still also an unsolved case. So she was just trying to get in the magazine mm-hmm. as in this as a search thing. Mm-hmm. And um, but it didn't really go anywhere, right? No, she ended up being in one of the home videos that they sell, which is okay. kind of like a compilation of the search. Okay. Yeah. But of course, everyone's going to grab on that. Yeah. But I remember with this story, which I thought was, it just, yeah, it was like there there was this couple and it was very interesting because they were like this hot kind of, like he was like mm-hmm. a muscly guy yeah. and she was a hot guy and they're kind of cheesy a little bit. And they go to like, you know, their New Year's Eve and they're going to this hot nightclub and they're fighting and then she's like, fuck you. But it's like, this is all before, like when I think about how scary and how hard it, how many women in my age and, and around my were like stuck at places and yeah. not safe because there was no phone with an Uber and a Lyft. Yeah, we forget how new Uber is. You know, the, like you, before Uber, you were screwed. You, you were so screwed. First of all, so hard to find a cab, especially yeah. in L.A. Mm-hmm. You know, this isn't New York. And then so you I remember like trying to like like find a phone, call information for a cab service. Try to get a cab to come to a re- residential area. It takes forever. I mean, if you went back to like a, someone's house after a nightclub, you are screwed. Yeah, you're Especially really Especially like stuck. up in the hills. Yeah. 100%. There was some story I can't remember that was someone was telling me or maybe it was just it was one of those. Oh, I know. It was one of the stories involving Danny Masterson. Oh, yeah. Who's now in prison, who there were all these accounts of him. You know, drugging girls and raping them. And there was a story, um, maybe I did see it on a girl on TikTok, where it was she and her friend, and her. they went back to the night, from the nightclub back to the, his house, and they, the Masterson girlfriend was there. Oh, the girl that, it, I, is he, he's not married to China Phillips, he's married to B- Bijou. Bijou Phillips, yeah. Yeah. And they were just, I think they were not married at that time, but it was like that 70s show, the height of it, and- they're like drinking and they're just like cool because they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe we're at this guy's house. Like, let's just, you know, have the story to tell. And all of a sudden the girl telling TikTok story like looks over and the girl is like, like, she's like, how the hell did she get that fucked up or wow. whatever? And and she's like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And she like gets up and then the Masterson guy goes and somehow she intercepted whatever was going to happen. And then the Bijou Phillips, according to this girl got really mad at him like are you fucking doing this again <gasps> oh no yeah like that type of thing oh, and so God. then they were like we're gonna leave and they're like up in the hills above sunset right yeah and the phone is dead there's no but there's also no uber or anything and they literally just had to like sit on the curb in the cold and it's confusing to get down from the hills 
too. Oh like those God, windy like, streets. Like, you and don't they know. just sat there. The girl like passed out in the mud, and the other girl like stayed there. And they, and then by the luck of God, some cab just literally drove by, like dropping someone else off oh at 6 a.m. And they got Thank in God. the cab and were okay. Ugh. That's the worst. But I just, yeah, I just don't it's even. It's such a common thing, though. I know. I know that people think, like, it's scary that we get into Ubers and, you know, and you have to be careful of that. But let me tell you, the Uber Lyft world is one billion times safer. So much better than what You're was before. You're in the back yeah. seat. You have your phone. I'm not saying you still, bad things don't happen yeah. to you. But, like, the whole system is so much better that you can just leave when you want to leave, you don't have to have cash on you. You don't have to have a credit card on you. You just have to have your phone charged. Yes. So much better. Yeah, people people don't know the struggle. <laughs> these I kids mean, these days don't know the struggle. Of just the weird situations. Yeah, the places you get stuck. And then they never, so they never found this girl because they said, they, yeah, there was different suspects. But then he was obviously a suspect being the boyfriend. Yeah, they and did And because the they had this volatile mm-hmm. relationship. And how scary that must be that, yeah. like, you know, ugh, like that, it, that all of a sudden your spouse is something after to your bo- girlfriend and like you're, of course, the, the person. Yeah. Um, OK, this one was like this one was from a way, from a while back. This girl, um, yeah. Victoria, tell us about her. She, she was, was a, a playmate from like the late 60s, right? Yeah, she was a playmate in the late 60s. She went by the name Angela Dory and then she was a playmate of the year. And she was close friends with Sharon Tate and she was really traumatized when the Manson murders happened. And it was always kind of something that was in the back of her head. Like, this could happen to me. Somebody gave her a gun to protect herself. Just to remind people, like, Sharon Tate was this beautiful actress. Sorry, I'm just actress. assuming everybody yeah, else. <laughs> she's a beautiful actress and... But young, and Mm -hmm. she was pregnant with Roman Polanski's child, Mm -hmm. which Roman Polanski was accused of um, raping a 13-year-old girl in which he was then left the country Mm -hmm. and never, and he's never come back. No, I think he's still in prison. And then that case is really weird because that woman is, I don't know, like changed her story or come, I I, I don't know. I don't know if she's changed her story. I got the impression she's just kind of tired of being known as only that and wants to move on, I think, and just wants to let it go. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that is is why people don't speak up sometimes because they're like, this was so horrible. I don't want to go through this, Mm -hmm. you know? And then he's this rich, powerful director and all he had to do was leave. But at the time, that happened after the love of his life, I assume, Mm -hmm. Sharon Tate, was this very promising actress, beautiful, perfect face. And she had these friends over, and they were staying at um, the house off of Laurel. And Charles Manson and his weird group, he had gone there already, and he believed that this record producer that blew him off because he thought yeah. he wanted to be like the next Beatles. Mm-hmm. They So he, he was – and one day when she was there, he showed up when she was visiting Sharon – and he was looking for the record producer. They're like, he doesn't live here, and you're that guy's creepy. Then he got his weird cult following guys and girls to go to that house, told him you need to go kill those people in the house, and they did. Mm-hmm. And that was Sharon Tate Wall, eight months pregnant, yeah. and her friends. Mm-hmm. And so there was a very good chance that this girl, Victoria, could have been there but wasn't that night Mm -hmm. she like wasn't feeling well or something and i think that's something that can really screw you up the person that like yeah doesn't get on the plane Mm -hmm. or they had the survivor's guilt yeah survivor's guilt for sure yeah like when the plane crash happens they need on a plane and in some ways you can be like oh my god you know god put there's some great purpose for me you know some divine intervention but then there's this other part i think that really screws you up where or and then in her case, she thought that th- somehow maybe they'd be after her. Yeah. So she always had a gun because of that to protect herself. But later in life, she ended up shooting her husband. And luckily, he's didn't pass away. He's still with us. But yeah. But in that one, I was when I was reading the stuff, it was like, you know, she went on. She still went to a lot of things, and she was still kind of like one of those like the best fifty, you know, the fifty mm-hmm. greatest. So yeah. she was like doing. It sounds like she was. Posing nude, like probably late into her thirties, which was kind of unheard of back then. Mm-hmm. And but then she like met this guy. And then it sounds like they were sort of like not killing it in life, 
he had some drug issues and she was like a waitress. And in her, in this case, that she, the husband was shot and she tried to say it was like a drug at, like a, a drug dealer thing. But what, did she ever do time? I believe she did do time. She's out now. Because she yeah. did, she did shoot him in mm -hmm. a weird situation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just think there's such fascination, like, with just, like, the beauty goes away and... Yeah, and I think there can just be a lot of, you know, mental health issues that come from being involved in such a high stakes world where kind of your only value is the way you look and things like that. Yeah, and then just the beauty, the beauty and like getting gifts and all that kind of stuff. And like when you were there, like, would you get many presents? I mean, yeah, we would for holidays and things like that. But it would all be like evened out. Like as far as the um, like girls everybody all getting would get, yeah, like everybody got the same thing. It was very like even Stevens, and it wouldn't be enough so you ever felt like you were so you know rolling in it financially that you felt really free to leave, you know? Right, because it's like with girls that are like in a transactional kind of relationship mm -hmm. like that, oftentimes you know they do try to get the the real. Birkins and the the real Cartier because it's like that's their only security and I knew a girl that lived like that for many years and she really did try to make this relationship work and then you know he was volatile and everything and and when she when she went to go leave she wanted to come back and get her shit and he had taken it and that was oh, like her God. only security for oh, all those no. years she was not on a, <clears throat> a property or anything I think that must have been what it felt like in the Sandy Bentley case because she was getting all these lavish gifts from this man thinking, okay, these are mine now. So if right. she had any other money saved, who knows? She might have spent that. And then when they come yeah. and say that was actually bought with stolen money, that can be scary because you don't have anything left. Or even like Erica Jane on yeah, Real of Beverly Hills. Yeah. That was a very <clears throat> transactional marriage. And she said, um, please, I'm not going to have a – you know, I never had a prenup. I'm dealing with Tom Girardi. She knew she was fucked. She knew even if she wanted to get divorced, mm -hmm. she would be fucked. So in my opinion, in everything I've read, and I read her book, and I've interviewed her, and I've watched every episode, I think that after 10 years, she was like, I think she tried. I think she was into it, and she was, you know, and then after 10 years, she just kind of was like, you can screw whoever you want. Yeah. I'm going to pursue this other career. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you spend, you could have this credit card. And she spent it. And I mean, she really doesn't have anything to show from those 20 years that she hasn't now built herself in the last five. Yeah. I mean, thank God she went on the show, though, because now she now she has that lifeline. And he and I, I asked, I was like, why do you think he would want her on the show when he's doing this corrupt stuff? Yeah. And um. I don't think they ever think it's going to come out. They never do. That's no. the narcissistic way. Yeah. They just think they're smart. And he mm -hmm. thought, well, this will just get me more business. Yeah. There's a lot of people that don't associate me with Aaron Brockovich or don't know. You know, so he thought, oh, this will be great. You know, and this was the trophy. And But it was interesting when you look back and then he was like, let me finish. Let me yeah. finish, Erica. Like, it was just like a crotchety dick. And she just was like. Whatever, I'm just going to, you know. Yeah, it's so rude. Get my jewels and whatever, but I mean. But in that power dynamic, you're kind of stuck with it. It sucks. I know what's that saying, like anybody that marries for money works hard. It's the hardest job. <laughs> like you'll never work harder if that's the reason because you're in this weird. Right. I do. I do. Yeah, I do think when you agree to it, it is a different dynamic. Yeah, you get all the stuff, but you you just don't have the say or like you're catering to this person. Yeah. 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 It's 24 hours. You're kind of watching your back and yeah. making sure you're always doing the right things. Now, do you, um, what about Crystal Hefter? Have you read her book? Um, It's not out yet, I don't think. Oh, okay. I've been following her and I've asked her to come on the show and she does, it doesn't respond, well, but I think she's saving it for herself. I think she's doing her own show. I don't know. I unfollowed her. I was talking to her for a while. I was interested in hearing her story because yeah. she said some things before that I really resonated with. 
But then she started getting like really rude and mean to Bridget on her Instagram stories for no reason. Like they don't even talk. And I'm like, I can't follow her anymore. I can't do this junior high shit. What do you mean? Like she was trying to say stuff back? Like not even say stuff back because Bridget wasn't even saying anything about her, but she would do these Q&As on her Instagram story. And as we all know, Q&As are often curated. You know, if you want to say something, wait for somebody to ask you that question so it doesn't no, seem No, I don't really problem. know that. Really? But now that makes sense that I you say like that. I feel like people do that all the time. You know what? I, I, I've I, had some drama in my own um, life, which mm-hmm. I've joked about, and I've been like, I want off on the Real Housewives of podcasting because <laughs> I don't enjoy it. Yeah. I really don't. Oh, I wore hoops, by the way, because oh, I'm on theme. <laughs> <laughs> but I really don't enjoy that. And it's funny that fans sometimes think it is like curated. Like, yeah. I'm like, I wish... It was that we got into a room and decided to do this together. Yeah. So I think there's, I think that never happens. But I mm-hmm. do think there's certain people that will leave a nasty comment under a post. As bait. As bait. Knowing that like a reality blurb or something mm-hmm. will grab that, make that a story. They can now, run back to Reddit. Yeah. Now <laughs> there's a fight. Yeah. Now you're responding. And because I... But I personally don't like that. I, yeah. To me, it's like stresses me out. And I it's it's not how I like run being a stand-up comic or what I do with this show. And so unfortunately, now that I'm like kind of hyper aware of it, even when somebody's like, oh, this so-and-so said this about you on their podcast, I'm like, sometimes I'll go listen, but I'm like, I don't want to respond because then it's like, now I have the, you know, the micro influencers doing a thing about it and that yeah. they're never, and I'm like, and I'm not going to just keep like defending myself. So, so that I never thought about with the Q and A thing, cause I've never done the Q and A thing mm-hmm. on the Instagram. So meaning like you have someone or you tell your assistant to go like ask the question or you can put people the question People could do up. that or maybe you know it's something out there people are talking about and you want to respond to it but so it seems less out of pocket you just ask your fans ask me a question and hopefully somebody asks it or you could ask yourself I guess. Oh <laughs> and then get that drama going. Yeah. So then she started saying just things that were very hurtful to Bridget like saying well Hef never asked about her. Hef never wanted to see her before he died and things like that and you know Hef told me that those relationships weren't you weren't even significant in his life and just like really rude, hurtful shit. And I'm, I just unfollowed because I don't want to do this junior high BS. No, <laughs> I'm just like, but the one reason that you kind of connected with her is that she was like, I found all the photos, some well, of the photos, right? Yeah, what was yeah, the story we there? Did connect over that. I was expressing my concern on secrets of Playboy and saying that one of the many reasons I kind of felt like I didn't want to leave when I was at the mansion is you have all these kind of naked photos of yourself, candid photos from the bedroom. You were wasted. You don't remember taking them. And he puts them all in his scrapbook. And then years later, I found out he wants to donate those scrapbooks to a library. I'm just imagining like a scrapbook like <laughs> of disgusting pictures. No, but like in my day, when we were before, like, iPhones. Are you picturing, were, like, stickers yeah, and, like, the cutouts? Yeah, there were women that would literally <laughs> sell, like, a, a, a multi-level marketing packaging mm-hmm. of scrapbooking. Yeah. And I am, like, totally not crafty. I'm not a Michaels person. I'm horrible at art. I don't frame photos. I never did it. But, like, I'm imagining, like, yeah. <laughs> the cutters of the circle. Yeah. Like, here we are. Here. Okay, so go on, yeah. No, his were very basic. It was just yeah. like a picture, picture, and then names and things like yeah. that. So it's kind of uh, gross to know that. It's very That's, revenge porn. Like, so yes. many of these women. And there's the pictures. Old-fashioned revenge porn. Yeah. yeah, and there's so many of these women who were coming to test for Playmate who maybe never became a Playmate or a girlfriend or nothing ever came out of it. And they have their explicit photos that maybe they were wasted and don't even remember taking with their name on it in the book that he wants to put in the li- public library. That's gross. So, what do you mean public library? Well, he wants to like donate it to a library. Like, you That's know how what he wanted to do. UCLA after- has them now. They're just not like on display. I'd sue if they went on display, swear to God. Wait a minute. <laughs> UCLA has some of the actual like... All of them. I think. I'm so then, sure. so then there were other ones that were even more explicit that were not put in the scrapbook that then no, she says that she took and threw away or something. Well, explicit ones were, but he had multiple copies of all these photos too, and he had this third story room in 
it was the third story of the house, but it was the second story of his bedroom. There was a staircase that went up to it. And it was just like a hoarder mess of like all this extra scrapbooking stuff. So you would literally have mountains of prints from like his disposable camera and things like that. So I believe that's what she meant when she threw those out. I don't think she went through his scrapbook archive and took out the ones that are not really cool to have. Oh. Yeah, that's what I think. Well, okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about this Epstein stuff that's coming out. Yeah, that is so – and do we have any details besides what the victims have come forward, like what was going on with these? Well, what I've always said from the beginning of covering this stuff is I was like, I've always thought that the way – because no one knew how how Epstein got so rich. He was – a math teacher that didn't even graduate from college that like yeah. faked his records to work at a private school, mm-hmm. okay? Which sometimes private schools are not as strict um, as who they hire, whatever. He was, so, you know, and he was young, probably, you know, li- liking the high school students, whatever. And then he gets into like finance. Mm-hmm. And then he's running the Victoria's Secret guy's money. Yeah. And then he was always getting more money from people. And I was, and nobody really knew why he was so wealthy. And I always thought, I think he invites these people to his parties and he's like, oh, I've got young girls around, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then has a wild party. And then the next day is like, oh, by the way, the girl that gave you a blowjob last night is actually only 16. Yeah. She's not 18. And on top of that, I filmed it. So I hope you're going to donate $5 million today. Like, I think that's what I've always thought. Yeah. And that is what I've heard now is finally coming to fruition in in getting all this information, which the mainstream media is constantly like, if they do anything about it, they're like, and this person was on the flight log, uh, you know, 800 times, but there's, and all these people are saying this is what he said, but again, not accused of anything. We're not accusing you. I get why they're saying that, but I'm yeah. still like, Okay, so where is this? What is it? What do you have on these videos? Because right. I, I assume that's what it is, is that I think some guys came knowing that they were going to get with young girls. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think some just thought that they were free vacation, free vacation. Yeah, and so I think some thought these were just party girls, like mm-hmm. the kind that you'd be at Playboy Mansion that are young, but they're not. 16 yeah and we're gonna have some fun and it's consensual or whatever but it's not because they're being trafficked Mm -hmm. and they're forced to be there and so i think that's what hopefully we're gonna finally find out but the stephen hawking thing (laughs) it's like so strange so what i heard most recently was someone was saying that stephen hawking liked to watch naked little people solve math equations on a blackboard and i'm like but I mean, I, I don't mean to make light of it if it's true, but that sounds like something somebody would almost say sarcastically, right? Like if you're being questioned, like, well, what was Stephen Hawking doing on your island? Oh, I don't know. Maybe he was watching <laughs> naked little people solve math equations. Like, do you think that's real or do you think he was being sarcastic? It's so out there. Well, I mean, there are these accounts that he was a freak a OK? He's been getting a lot of press and lately. For people you- that don't know, he is this genius – but he was severely handicapped, and I don't know what his thing was, but he would, you know, he was in a wheel, confined to a wheelchair, and he would have the thing that would do, he was able to have mm-hmm. talk, so it sounded that way. I don't even know what his geniusness is, but um, the, here's a photo of him with, you know, on Epstein Island, where they said, enjoys a barbecue on Jeffrey Epstein's Caribbean Island, Little St. James, while attending a conference on gravity, Organized for 21 of the world's top physicists by Epstein's foundation on neighboring island St. Thomas. So he would have all these, again, parties. And I think also he, along with trafficking young girls and being a horrible, disgusting person, Jeffrey Epstein, I, I, you know, he was always involved with all these science and and along with his science, he wanted to impregnate all these women in um, – he was building this thing in New Mexico. Do you remember that story where he was going to like – Well, I heard Peter Nygaard had something to do with that too. Did you watch the Peter Nygaard documentary? No, remind us of th- that story. There's so he much – He was a fashion guy from Canada okay. who got in a lot of trouble for similar things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And he, yeah, and they were they, and they, no, so they were not connected, him and, or Epstein, or were they? Not that I know of. I just remember so on many the creeps Peter, in the last few yeah, years. I keep can't track. keep track of them. There was, I just remember watching on the Peter Nygaard documentary, yeah. there was some footage of him talking with a friend about how they wanted to like make all these like genetically superior humans or something. It was really weird. Yes. And it was so, yeah. And I just still am like, where, I just don't understand where Ghislaine Maxwell, like why she didn't share more. Like why, why she is going to be in prison forever, like yeah. forever. And it's just crazy that, I mean, listen, she's a piece of shit. She's an awful, disgusting person. And I think she's truly the the coyote that, you know, plays with mm-hmm. the puppy and makes him think that he's a dog. And then the rest of the coyotes come and kill yeah. him. Like that is who a woman trafficker is. Yeah, 100%. A woman female trafficker is the, you know, and there's, it's so disgusting to think that there's any of them, but they exist a lot. And she was one of them. And I think for her, um, like everyone was, I would kept thinking, well, you know, they had her before her trial staying in very poor conditions in a prison. And I'm like, aren't they getting her to like spill the beans? Yeah. But then I don't, I don't know. There's just so many cover ups and stuff. But I'm like, maybe she did spill the beans. Maybe we just don't And it was know. the wrong bean. And yeah, they're like, no, so we don't weird. want him. Yeah. We actually want him. So mm-hmm. unless your story lines up with this person, we really don't even want to hear about this person. I don't know. But it seems like there were a lot of powerful people from all sides of the political spectrum, including the royals that are involved in this. And like, I just want to know it all. And then meanwhile, while this is going on and and every article is like, oh, wow, we got more info, but they don't tell us the info. Yeah. And then they're like, and by the way, there's like aliens in Miami. Yeah, it's like, or speaking of aliens, it's like when Tucker Carlson always goes on these shows and says he knows the whole alien thing, but he can't tell anybody because it would blow everybody's mind. Yeah. Tell us. Why are you bragging that you know and you're not telling us? That drives me up a wall. Yeah, like, exactly. You can't throw out the bait and not reel it in. I know. Or even even if it's a sub girl on TikTok that's like, let me tell you about the worst celebrity that I dated. <laughs> yeah. And then all the comments are like names or it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Or like what? Like, again, like it's just so <laughs> annoying. So like, yeah. um, I get it why sometimes you can't, obviously, but we, wa- we want to know about the aliens. <laughs> yeah. I wa- and I want to I'm like, can, when can we actually when can we see these, you know, providing. Like if there's really video of like president getting a bj from a girl that that we can prove was under 18 at the time and you know and mm-hmm. it's saying yes i was trafficked i did this to this president this was the day this is my id like why can't why why can't we know that now i don't know it's like so what weird. is this yeah so strange because it's like I really think it's interesting because Matt Murphy, who's a friend of mine, he's a former prosecutor, and I just saw a little clip on his Instagram of him talking about this. He's like, the people that associated with Epstein, like before 2008, that's when he was actually caught. And for these like girls that were Mm -hmm. like 14, living in the town over, and they were all like, they were poor girls, and they would say to each other, like, Come give him hey, a massage. Yeah, come yeah. give him a massage. You get two hundred dollars, and it's really not that bad. And he's like an old creep, but it's really not that bad. Yeah. And like we get two hundred dollars, we get two fifty, whatever. And they were young, and when that all got cracked open, then um, and he did got some ridiculous sentence where he would just go to the prison like on the weekends from like eight to five. After that is when people he was having dinner parties and celebrities were going. Yeah. That's and it's creepy. like Google existed. Yeah, the totally. news existed, but you still chose yeah, that's gross. to go. And again, you know, maybe you I I forgive someone once for being like, mm-hmm. okay, I was new, you know, I'm just getting invited yeah. to some A-list shit. And, you know, Katie Kirk invited me, and next thing I know, we're at Jeffrey Epstein's house. Or this random guy asked to take a picture with me and I didn't really know him, you know? Yeah. I mean, like Chelsea Handler tells us tells a story, and I remember she told it when we were working together. Uh-huh. And and it was that whoever she was with, it was Katie Kirk or somebody, said, Would you want to go to this, you know, Jeffrey Epstein's house? And 
I don't know if she even put it together at the time. Mm -hmm. And then she sat next to Woody Allen and Woody Allen's daughter was there. And her famous joke that she would tell is that she that she said to Woody Allen, oh, and how did you two meet? Because that was just (laughs) it's a really good story. It is. It's a really good. I don't know if it really happened that way, but it's a great joke. And she told it years ago and she's told Uh it recently. Now. There is these logs that I don't really know if they're true. And there's just all these names and they're going around. Yeah. And I'm like, but did did she really go? I think that's the only time she went. And I'm like, did she really go to the island? And the, you know, she and Jimmy Kimmel and Whoopi Goldberg are all mm-hmm. being like, we did not hang out with Jeffrey Epstein. And there's yeah. no like proof to that. But there's all this other proof. So show that. Right. Show these videotapes and things like what is it's just so annoying. Yeah, it's really weird. And I'm like, I and the alien thing is just like, I don't even know. Like, so I guess the theory <laughs> is that aliens do exist or they don't, or they're faking stuff to make it look like aliens are coming down to, to distract, distract us yeah. from all of this. That could be like the the sub um, the submarine thing that exploded, right? I mean, let, now now that it's been a few months, let's just think about how fucking weird that was. Right. That it was like controlled the, the by biggest, like a video game controller. Yeah, that the biggest billionaires, some of the biggest billionaires in the, in the world decided to go on that. Rinky dink. Yeah, that that's weird. And I think there was something else going on in the world at that time that was like, yeah, I forget very, what it is, but you're right. It was you're a right. big distraction because that was all mm-hmm. it was talking about. And they're like, oh my gosh, um, they have 12 more hours before they all die. And then they prove that if this was even true, it exploded like, yeah. or they were probably all dead mm-hmm. hour, you know, days before it exploded. But then there is a woman that's like, no, my son is dead and he was part. I don't know. It's just like it's very it's a very interesting time. And I'm not. It is. We're and, in I don't, weird and I don't times. think it makes you a conspiracy theorist or whatever to watch the stuff and question it, too. I don't Absolutely know that it's not. true. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know that. it's. I don't know that there's aliens. Mm-hmm. I've never seen one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I kind of want to. I mean, I heard it's awful, but I kind but, of want to. Oh, didn't they find someone that's like a little, there was a little one in Mexico or something. They found like some. A little alien? Yeah, they found their, their tomb. They found these like buried bodies that are oh, not. Oh, was that real? Who knows? <laughs> Wait, I saw a really funny TikTok of yours where you were talking about um, how you're freaked out by the baby dolls. Oh, the real baby dolls. Okay. So first, before I talk about it, I have to acknowledge that there are people who love these baby dolls yes. and they are used, I think, sometimes for therapy for people yes. who are grieving. So acknowledge that. Like, you're not weird if you like the baby doll. But I think the baby dolls themselves and the fact that they're mass produced is weird because they Now look, they're mass produced? I always thought I they were so. like I a think, hard thing. Like, I don't aren't know. they very they're expensive? They're probably expensive. But I think anybody can get them. Like, I think there's like hobbyists and stuff who oh, like okay. them. But... These baby dolls, if you don't know, look like a real baby. They're so realistic. And I just they're feel like, like, a, they, like their hair isn't perfect. Mm-hmm. They're a little blotchy. Yeah. like they, And I feel like if I saw one, even across the room, and it was like laying weird, I think it was a real baby that somebody dropped. Right. It's terrifying. Or like what happens when somebody's like, oh, I don't need this anymore. Goodwill bag. Like, what if you found that? What if you right. found one in the garbage? I'm so freaked out by those. I'm freaked out. Yes. Freaked out. Yeah, I can't deal. And then people in the comments were saying, oh, yeah, you know, we get calls like I work at the police station or whatever. We get calls because people find these and they think it's a real baby in the dumpster. Scary. Oh, really? Terrifying. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I always thought that was a really weird. Anytime I see like a TikTok of one come up, I'm like, "Eh, I don't want to see it. (laughs) Yeah. It, it, It is crazy. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I, do, I thought that was really funny how you were just like, I'm really freaked out by it. Um, anyway, well, this was really juicy. I don't know what Stephen Hawking's is up to, but uh, well, did he, he cheat, cheat on her? Like, wait, okay, talk about I am that. sending you this TikTok because you've never seen it. Okay, so there's the Sprinkle Sprinkle lady on TikTok. On YouTube, she gives dating advice, okay. and it's always very much about getting your bag and not putting up with bullshit. And then she says, Making "Sprinkle, your money. sprinkle. Yeah, with guys, yeah." And, and she goes, "Sprinkle what? Sprinkle the money, or what is I don't the sprinkle know what it mean? means?" Okay. I always pictured it like 
glitter or okay. raining money right. or something. I don't know. But she says sprinkle, sprinkle. And there's just this really funny video of her talking about how Stephen Hawking cheated on his wife. And even Stephen Hawking is cheating on his wife. Totally. So he can't trust any man. I'm sending you the TikTok. It's so funny. No, it's it's true. It's like, yeah. They're, and any they're, guy, any time, yeah, any place. Right. He has two minutes to himself. You never know. Right. It's just like, yeah, just, yeah, you 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 literally are not attractive and like this but you know that's the only that's the thing even even if it's not Stephen Hawking even if it's just like an average guy and you're like you know what he's you're really, feeling confident yeah he's really not that cute but he's nice and the cute guys haven't worked out so I'm gonna go for this guy that's not that cute but whatever just know that that guy then by you yeah by you lowering your standards yeah. to be with this person for whatever lowering your standards are that boosts that guy's confidence so much that he's like, if I can get this girl, which is you, what else can I get? Yeah, I think we've all kind of done that <laughs> yeah. in our dating lives. It's like the, this guy will be pursuing you and maybe you're not that into him, but maybe you've been through a string of bad guys. and You're like, but this guy seems really into me. And he's like, you know, he'll be he'll be safe. He'll he'll be like, you know, whatever. And then, no, yeah. it ends up like you're cheating like, Maybe this is meant something. to be. If he's this into me, maybe he's right. And maybe and we are meant to be together. And yeah. then you're like, then you lower your standards. And then, yeah. And then it's the worst one. <laughs> yeah, so like go for the best guy. Yeah. Also the the cuter better guys are confident in themselves. Like they're not sometimes they're not the ones that are cheating because or or you know, uh, taking advantage of women or whatever because they were always cute. Yeah. So they got the girlfriend in high school. Yeah, and it wasn't they've been hard. there, done that. Yeah. yeah. And like, if it didn't work out, it was kind of a mutual didn't work out. It mm -hmm. wasn't like, no girl has liked me for 30 <laughs> years, but yeah. now you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I'm so glad you came. And I'm so um, happy for your success and that you're doing so many different Thank things. You. you know what I have to say? Um, when I listen to your podcast and the thumbnail comes up, you know those apps that will make AI finish your picture. Yeah. Like you see part of a picture and the AI will like draw the rest of it. I always picture the rest of that picture. Do you remember Kim Kardashian's Playboy cover? And she's wearing like this red halter pinup yeah. bathing suit. And she's like sitting on her knees and perched like that. That's the rest of the picture in my mind. Because you're like in the same pose. Like you'll never unsee it if you look at that cover. Oh my God. <laughs> like that's what the rest of, you're in like a pinup heels and pinup suit. And you're like, oh my gosh. Listen, if a juicy scooper wants to finish the photo do it. with your can <laughs> or whatever skill set you have for photoshopping i would love it to have the kim kardashian ass of 20 years ago from the playboy that would be amazing i need to see it <laughs> i love it so tell everybody where they can watch this as well as your podcast and everything else you're doing so playboy murder season two premieres on monday january 22nd on id after that it'll be streaming on max and there's seven episodes this season and after that my new series lethally blonde will premiere in oh March. wait when what's that about it's another true crime series it's all about people from fascinating backgrounds and, but it's not playboy specific so it's a little bit similar to this but, but is every girl a blonde no 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 i'm the blonde <laughs> oh it's your you're yeah. the blonde we have oh. cases that center around men too and things they're oh, all, okay they're, they just all have to be really interesting that's the one criteria yeah, yeah that's what i'm into it has to yeah. be like i'm not into serial killing stories like anything too like graphic I like more like what was the motivation to lead you to the murder. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of stuff yeah, that fascinates so me. Yeah, or the one mistake or yeah. everything was great in your life and you just met this person and you decided to cheat on your husband and now fucking look at your life. Yeah, because two I, years ago you were at the country club. Now you're behind the bars. Yeah, because like I watched some of these cases and everything leading up to it. I'm like, well, those are choices I would have made, you know. And yeah. then it just takes such a wrong turn. Yeah, I love it. And then your podcast, Girls Next Level, it drops every Monday. We love it. It's so fun. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Thanks. <laughs>